This painting by French artist Jean-Baptiste Camille Corro has the flavor of the Barbizon school. The Barbizon school paintings represent the final part of the Louvre's collection. However, this new genre changed Xu Bei Hong and the Chinese artistic concept during that period. In the morning, the Louvre Museum is covered by a silvery mist, which can also be seen in a painting inside the museum. The painting takes us back to the French countryside of 1864. In the morning in Barbizon, in Corot's painting, the mountains in the distance are blanketed in the silvery mist. No one expected that this silvery mist would bring changes to Chinese art. In this period, Chinese artists began to become more interested in people. We visit the town of Barbizon on the last leg of our trip to explore the Louvre Museum and the Forbidden City. In the sunshine, this place sends a message to us. That is, life itself is art, and art is all around us. Barbizon has been a painter's village since the 19th century. Today, art historian Zhu Chin Sheng has come here in search of traces of the Barbizon school and to follow the artistic path laid out by Xu Bei Hong, one of Jean-Baptiste Camille Corot's students. This artistic path brought great changes to Chinese painting. And this is the moment we try to understand how East and West encountered each other and its outcome. In the exhibition, 60 Years of New China Art, the oil painting in the main hall continues the realist painting style of European art. A sculpture of Xu Bei Hong is placed in the exhibition hall of oil paintings, reminding us of the artistic exchanges between the East and the West in the last century. Xu Bei Hong how did this change happen? Let's go back to Paris in 1830. At that time, factories were becoming mechanized, and large numbers of people moved from the countryside to the cities. Because of this industrial modernization, European powers became more ambitious and more powerful. In order to plunder more wealth and control markets, they set their eyes on places beyond Europe.
At that time, European artists wanted a modern revolution. On the other hand, they cherished the lost traditions. In 1835, Corot found Barbizon, a village that attracted many painters. They left the bustling cities and began to paint natural landscapes and the simple life. This is the Barbizon School, a brand of French realistic painting. Painters of the Barbizon School were not fond of politics or current affairs. They wanted to seek inner peace and be close to nature. On a regroupé en fait dans ce terme d'école de, de Barbizon euh, tous les gens qui ont travaillé un moment ou un autre en forêt de Fontainebleau. Pour eux, euh, le paysage doit représenter la nature pour elle-même, telle qu'elle est, sans utiliser le paysage comme un décor pour un récit historique ou un récit de toute nature. Babi December the 1st, 1986, a railway station was converted into the Orsay Museum. It holds mainly French art, dating from the 1840s to the beginning of the 20th century. The development of modern art was nurtured here. The Louvre, across the Seine, is a museum of ancient fine art and carries Western artistic traditions within it. The Barbizon School represented the end of realism. So when Chinese painters came to learn European art, why did they learn realistic painting skills that were coming to an end rather than the emerging modern art. Professor Zhu explains the art revolution that happened about a century ago to a class at Peking University. Peking University was the cradle of this cultural movement. On January the 15th, 1919, Chen Du Shou, the leader of the new culture movement, published an article in the New Youth. He advocated that artists should learn Western realism 
and make changes to Chinese painting, especially in a period of internal disorder and foreign invasion. Compassion for the nation and its people, which had been missing for hundreds of years, was to be retrieved. All thoughts and acts should be rooted in real life. These landscape paintings were perfectly crafted copies of old masterpieces. Yet, they did not reflect social reality. It seemed that China was missing the opportunity of industrialization and modernization. warfare and death pushed people to the brink of revolution. Reformers tried to learn advanced Western technologies to make China stronger. The idea of learning from the West had deeply influenced Xu Bei Hong. Encouraged by his tutor, Kang Yu Wei, he was determined to go abroad to learn. In March 1918, while teaching at Peking University Art School, Xu visited the Forbidden City with his colleagues. At that time, the family of the last emperor still lived in the inner court. But other areas of the palace were open to the public as the Antiquities Museum, which was to become the first national museum of China. Xu saw the collection of the imperial family, which spanned thousands of years. These simple and elegant landscape paintings did not reflect social reality. Xu sighed that before the 15th century, China ranked first in terms of painting in the world but now China was in decay. He was determined to seek an art that was inspiring and dealt with social reality. He declared that from that point on, he and his colleagues would work hard to make their nation strong. One year later, Xu went abroad to trace the path of Western civilization. It was the path of realism, which had originated in Greece. On May the 10th, 1919, Xu arrived in Paris and immediately went to the Louvre. From then on, he became a regular visitor at the museum. He often copied paintings up until the closing hours, taking only a piece of bread for lunch. Xu described the artworks at the Louvre as marvelous and unbelievable. He was moved by Eugene Delacroix's The Massacre at Chios, and his eyes brimmed with tears. Xu also greatly admired Koro, whose paintings were both realistic and poetic.
He came here to search for the realistic style and ways to deal with reality. Shu and other painters who shared the same ambition introduced this kind of realistic style to China. Realism required rigorous painting skills and a clear-cut theme, not only classical and romantic, but also the Barbizon School's real-life themes. La technique réaliste en fait peut parfaitement être employée par des artistes qui sont qui dépendent d'écoles académiques, qui dépendent de ce qu'on appelle le néoclassicisme, qui dépendent aussi de, de, de l'école romantique par exemple. La, le, le terme de technique réaliste veut simplement dire que dans son œuvre picturale, le peintre cherche à représenter la, la réalité de la façon la plus précise possible. Chu came to France with the intention of learning realist art. He considered learning Western realistic painting skills to be his most important mission. From the period of ancient Greece, Europeans had begun to consider art to be an analysis of reality and nature. In the period of the Renaissance, art was developed into a science by the great masters. The direction of Western painting had begun to reflect social reality and closely mirror the material world. The Italian artist Caravaggio paid a great deal of attention to people in real life. The stories in his paintings were based on biblical accounts, but the characters were chosen from real country women and countrymen. His innovation influenced Dutch artists Rembrandt and Vermeer, French artists Latour and Chardin, as well as the artists of the Barbizon school. Artworks completed during the 3,000-year period from ancient Greece to the period of the Barbizon school make up the Louvre's main collections. In the 19th century, the only two inns in Barbizon were occupied by painters who came for inspiration in the summertime. One of them became today's municipal museum. From the painting on the wall, we can see that painters liked to drink and paint here. The dinner table is the same as the one in the painting. There are sketches on the walls and shelves. It seems that the owner left just a moment ago and will come back soon. They pick up their easels and go to the fields. A dog is lying on the ground. A Prussian soldier entering the inn also appears in their paintings. The sketch beside the window depicts the scenery that can be seen through it. Over the years, the people in the paintings have disappeared, but the tree is still there. Painters of the Barbizon School depicted ordinary daily life like this.
巴比中画派似乎进入现实的时候，其实正是在超越。和脱离现实，因为他们逃离了城市现代化的文明啊，走入乡村去寻找他他们内心的安宁和他们精神上的一种超越In 1919, when Xu came to France with the dream of saving China, what he sought was not inner peace. He met one of Corot's students, Pascal Danian Bouveret, at a tea party. 67-year-old Danian Bouveret took this young 25-year-old Chinese man as his student. Xu went to Danian Bouveret's studio every Sunday. He told Xu not to follow the temporary trend. This was what his teacher, Koro, had also told him. The sketching is the basis of Western fine art. Like other classical painters, Koro paid much attention to sketching. Shu also spared no effort in practicing it. Later, when he tried to change traditional Chinese painting, he focused on sketching. Realistic painting could reflect the sufferings of real life. Maybe this was the reason why Shu was attracted by realist painting skills. Painters in Barbizon worked to earn a living. For example, in addition to painting, Millet also worked in the fields. He was connected with the fields and the sufferings of life. To Xu, who was concerned about the country and the people, these paintings were the best explanation of life. Chu rejected the works of Van Gogh, Matisse and Picasso. Because he thought these obscure paintings would not strike a chord in people's hearts. With his mission of saving the country, Chu might not have comprehended the significance of modern art. Some people believe that modern art made the Western spirit more confident and powerful. Even Western artists might not have realized this at the time. Xu Beihong, in the country's difficult moments, will use art to save the country. 因此，他们寻找的艺术是一种能够作为武器的艺术，作为工具的艺术。By 1928, Xu had returned to China and begun to create Tianhang and 500 brave men. He wanted to encourage people to fight invaders through the story of Tianhang, an ancient warrior who pledged to die rather than surrender. Xu used Western painting skills to depict this Chinese story. He applied Western techniques of perspective, light and shade to Chinese paintings.
His paintings brought a breath of fresh air to a depressed China in time of war. In France, however, such styles had become outdated. This is Corot's self-portrait, painted when he was 29. He was just about to leave for Italy. According to tradition, his parents asked him to produce a self-portrait. That same year, photography was invented. Undoubtedly, Western art was about to change. By the time Corot was 63, a self-portrait could be produced with a camera. A camera could reflect reality in a direct way. Ordinary people could also have their own photographs taken. The Barbizon school and the realistic style were disappearing. The dominant art of the West was replaced by Western inventions and technologies. Many less famous portrait and landscape artists switched to photography and became professional photographers. A new era was to begin. Impressionism was born in Paris. The oval gallery of the Orangerie Museum was specially built for Monet's eight paintings called Water Lilies. When he reached the peak of perfection, his paintings were sent to museums by other emerging modernists. In 2009, traditional painting methods could still be found. A painter who was born and grew up in Barbizon creates a scene of a horse pulling a cart. This kind of scene was very common several decades ago. Le travail autrefois, si vous voulez, se faisait avec le cheval de trait. Et donc je veux représenter toute cette partie de la région. Disons que c'est un c'est un témoignage par rapport à Jean-François Millet qui peignait most of the paintings go to Japanese art dealers. The paintings represent memory and retrospection, but not the improvement of art. One Brazilian painter has stopped using the skills of realism and painting the scenery he sees through the window. This painter's village is open to the whole world, and here, painters explore the future development of art. In the exhibition of modern art at the Louvre Museum, modern artworks are placed in the Hall of Paintings. Traditional art and modern art communicate in the same space. The spirit of Western art is maintained in the Louvre Museum. On the one hand, they keep and display artworks in museums. On the other, they break traditions and create something new. This process promotes the modernization of art and culture. In the modernization of art, the Barbizon school represents the end of tradition. Today, viewed from a Chinese perspective, the fields and gardens in Corot's paintings have new meanings. Corot's paintings, in the Chinese eye, 
，他有一种特殊的文气和特殊的优美。他的作品既反映了他对自然和真实的尊崇，也反映着他对城市文明和社会现实的逃避。Beams of sunlight peek through the mist in Corot's painting, conveying the feelings of the painter: happiness, peace, and a mild sense of sadness. This is the kind of painting Corot spent his entire life dreaming of. Corot's final resting place is located in central Paris. Set among trees and flowers, Père Lachaise Cemetery is like Corot's favorite landscape painting. Dans les traités théoriques en Europe, il faut regarder la nature, la copier de façon la plus réaliste possible, et puis ensuite, il faut laisser parler le sentiment, et il faut imaginer des mondes qui sont des mondes idéaux finalement. Et quand on lit les traités théoriques chinois, les, les théoriciens chinois disent exactement la même chose. French scholars praise the spirit of Chinese painting. However. Chen Dushou and Xu Bei Hong rejected this kind of spirit. This was really dramatic. In 1919, all elements of traditional Chinese culture were targets of the revolution. Think of those turbulent years. Let's take another look at the massacre at Kios which almost reduced Xu Bei Hong to tears. Perhaps what impressed him were not only the skills, light, shade, color and proportion, but also the concern for people. Today, the Palace Museum is the Palace of Art. Dozens of Xu's paintings and calligraphic works are kept here. When he came here for the first time at the age of 23, he might not have expected that one day his own works would be displayed here. When he went abroad to learn art, he might not have expected that his selected works would be those featuring traditional Chinese methods of expression, even though he applied Western skills to many of his paintings. In the Louvre Museum, the Barbizon School represents an end. However, in the Forbidden City, Xu Bei Hong represents a new beginning. One hand, we need to transcend our own great tradition and create a new creation. But on the other hand, we also have the responsibility to preserve our own tradition, to preserve it, to find out the value of it. 把它发展为全世界人民的共同财富，让它成为今后创造的一个伟大的资源。In this series, we traveled through Western Asia, Egypt, g r 
Greece and Rome, covering the Middle Ages and the Renaissance. a great artistic tradition in the Louvre Museum. Throughout this tradition, Western people have constantly developed and created a modern civilization. Meanwhile, at the Palace Museum, we have appreciated the great works of Wang Shizhi, Wang Wei, Mi Fu, Zhao Meng Fu, Ni Zan, Dong Qi Chang, and others. Their works represent the essence of Chinese art, different from the artworks at the Louvre Museum, but masterpieces nonetheless. Today, in museums, civilizations are shared and highlighted. Works kept in museums represent parts of our history, but not the whole process of art. Different arts have different origins and paths of development. We look at the Louvre Museum from the perspective of the Chinese in order to better understand world civilizations. We look at it from a modern perspective so that Chinese civilization can revive. Through modern artistic creation, human civilizations continue and develop. When the Louvre meets the Forbidden City is an opportunity for cultural communication. A path of cultural communication is being built here and this will promote cultural development in the future.